Hello, my name is Bashir Fadl, and on behalf of LearnITCoursesOnline.com, I'd like to welcome you to this session. Welcome again to this as we continue our journey to this session, as we continue our journey into the career of a business analyst. As a business analyst in today's world, there's a certain expectation of technology savviness. It is not generally an expected requirement of being a business analyst, but it definitely goes a long way when I'm applying for a job or looking to grow into a business analyst or senior business analyst, and I'm able to use different technologies and apps and softwares. So we're gonna examine some softwares that are commonly used out there, not to limit, but to kind of draw the expectation of the technologies. There might be similar products out there. We're not endorsing any specifically, but we're saying here's some of the things that you might face and here's some products that are commonly used that the more we are aware of them, the more we're able to face and excel in those challenges being proactive. So one thing that we saw that's important to a business analyst is modeling. So for the next few part of the session or slides, we're gonna look at some of those softwares that are out there. For example, using Microsoft Word, you can actually do some of the modeling or the basic modeling in there by going to inserting images or even PowerPoint. But more specifically or more commonly used is Microsoft Visio. Microsoft Visio is a drawing and diagramming software that helps transform concepts into a visual representation. Visio, V-I-S-I-O, provides you with predefined shapes, symbols, backgrounds, and borders. Simply just drag and drop elements into your diagram to create a professional communication tool. In two simple steps, step one, to open the new Visio drawing, we go to the start menu and select programs, click Visio, and then step two, we move our cursor over the business process and select the, bis the basic flowchart. One thing that's nice about a lot of the Microsoft products in, in Microsoft Office is you do have templates. So when you click new, you can always go to a template and kind of select a template that might be similar to your product so you're not starting from scratch. And this screenshot shows the major sections of Microsoft Visio application. Section A, we have the toolbar across the top of the screen are like other Microsoft pod, uh, programs such as Word and PowerPoint. If you have used these programs before, you might notice a few different functionalities which we'll explore later. Selecting help diagram gallery is a good way to become familiar with the types of drawings and diagrams that can be created in Visio. Section B on the left side of the screen shows the menu specific to the type of diagram you're creating. In this case, we see arrow shapes, backgrounds, basic flow shapes, borders, and tiles. And then we have section C. The center of the screen shows the diagram workspace, which includes the actual diagram page, as well as some blank space adjacent to the page. Section D, the right side of the screen shows some help functions. Some people may choose to close this window to increase the area of the diagram workspace and reopen the help functions when necessary. There are different versions of Microsoft Office. Visio is part of the enterprise. And so you can kind of look at the license if you'd like to have a trial or upgrade your office to add it if that's what you'd like. Another tool used for modeling is Enterprise Architect. Enterprise Architect is a visual modeling and design tool based on UML. The platform supports the design and construction of, of software systems, modeling business processes, and modeling industry-based domains. It is used by business and organizations to not only model the architecture of their systems, but to process the implementation of these models across the full application development lifecycle. The intent of Enterprise Architect is to determine how an organization can most effectively achieve its current and future objectives. Enterprise Architect has four points of view, which are as follows. Number one, the business perspective, the business perspective defines the process and standards by which the business operates on a day-to-day -day basis. Number two, application perspective. The application perspective defines the interactions among the processes and standards used by the organization. Number three, 
information perspective. This defines and classifies the raw data like document files, databases, images, presentations, and spreadsheets that organization requires in order to efficiently operate. And number four, technology perspective. This defines the hardware, operating system, programming, and networking solutions used by the organization. Another software that's commonly used is called Rational Requisite Pro. So the process of eliciting, documenting, and organizing tracking and change requirements and communicating this information across the project teams to ensure that iterative and unanticipated changes are maintained through the project life cycle. Monitoring status and controlling changes to the requirement baseline, the primary elements are change control and traceability. So requisite pro is used for the above activities and project administration purposes. The tool is used for querying and searching, viewing the discussion that were part of the requirements. In requisite pro, the user can work on the requirement document. The document is, or usually is a Microsoft Word file created in RecPro application integrated with the project database. Requirements created outside the requisite pro can be imported or copied into the document. Requisite pro projects enable us to create a project framework in which the project artifacts are organized and managed. Each project, the following are included. General project information, packages, general document information, document types, requirement types, requirement attributes, attribute values, cross-project traceability. Next is JIRA. A lot of companies enjoy using JIRA because it's a cloud-based solution. It helps with defect fixing and tracking, box tracking and fixing. It also helps with project planning. Next is SQL, which is kind of a, I don't wanna use the word uh, development language or programming language, but think about it as a simple language for querying. SQL stands for a structured query language. And you're more interested in what's called the select statement, which is the command with which you can query data. The nice thing about it, it's a standard. And when you work as a business analyst, chances is you have data, some that's in Excel, some that's in Access, some that could be in Oracle, some that could be in Salesforce, some that could be in different sources of data, MySQL and so on and so forth. Basically the SQL is a standard language that allows you to communicate with all those systems and pull your data to query very quickly. So learning, especially the select statement within SQL is very important. Again, the value comes in as we're doing ad hoc reports and evaluating things and comparing data from multiple systems. Next is Excel or spreadsheets in general. The nice thing about it is a lot of people are not aware that within Excel, you can connect to external data systems. So from within Excel, I can connect to data in Salesforce, Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, Access, and be able to report in it because a lot of people are proficient with spreadsheets, whether it's Google Sheets or Excel, and be able to do that computation. You can also query it using your SQL and select statements. And more importantly, you can provide the results in dashboard, which is something that management usually enjoys. Which leads us to the final point, which is dashboards. One thing that management is highly interested in is not the line items. It's not the 1000 rows of accounts that were created or users that access the system, but they're looking for numbers and, and, and pie charts and graphs that will kind of simplify that information simply by looking at it. And as such, we can leverage tools that allow us to develop reports and dashboards or our SQL skills in tools such as Power BI, or Tableau, or even within Excel. Again, there's a whole variety, some that are more basic, some that go with a little bit of development. It's if you're in Salesforce, for example, you have your reports and dashboards in there. And developers, for example, will go the step further within Power BI with more complex designs, and also within things such as SSRS, which is SQL Server Reporting Services. But at the end of the day, as a business analyst, if you were to touch on something 
such as Power BI or Tableau on a basic level, it brings a lot of value to the table. Thank you for joining us in this session with Learn IT Courses Online. We hope to see you in the next one.